For today's stitch along you're going to need some wash away stabiliser, some cut away stabiliser that will be floated in the hoop, I've got my 5x7 hoop, a curved scissors, variegated thread, matching bobbin, ribbon, I've got 8 pieces of fabric cut to 5x7 and rather than pelon or batting I'm using felt that's going to do exactly the same job, those two are cut to 5 by 7 and I've got four pieces of those. Now I thought it'd be nice to show you how to make something very 3D and practical out of something that's very flat. So I've chosen to make this seashell catch-all for my bathroom and the idea was actually inspired by Kay Walkup on Creative Kiwi so all thanks goes to her for the inspiration behind this. I'm going to start off by hooping my wash away stabiliser and then I'm going to cut a piece of um, cutaway to go on top. Now the reason I do this is if once you've uh, washed your item um, the wash away will no longer be. So I like to float a piece of cutaway stabiliser on top so that that will always be there inside. And by floating it and cutting it away uh, after the outline has been stitched on this it will be completely invisible but always be there. So now I'm going to pop this into my hoop and I'm going to stitch round one so now my my uh, cutaway stabiliser is stitched to the wash away I'm going to turn this over I'm going to take my first piece of fabric which is going to be the backing and I'm going to cover the outline. I'm just going to pop a little bit of tape on the corners to hold it in place while it stitches. You can use um, spray uh, basting. If you do use things like that make sure that it's actually for um, embroidery machines and quilting because if you don't and just use any old glue it will gum up your machine and ruin it. So now that that's stuck on I'm just going to turn that over. I'm going to place my um, batting felt even onto here and a piece of fabric on top. I'm now going to put that in my machine and stitch it down. As I'm using a variegated thread I'm not going to be changing colours throughout this project. So I'm now going to stitch colour number three which is the quilting lines. Now I'm going to cut away the felt, the cutaway stabiliser and the fabric. I'm cutting close to the stitch line but being careful not to cut the actual stitch line itself. If you do accidentally manage to nick it, don't pull at it, just leave it. It will be covered and sorted out in the next round of stitching. And not to forget the stabiliser as well. Okay, so I'm now going to pop that in my machine and I'm going to stitch round four. There's something important I forgot to do before putting it back in my machine and doing the zigzagging stitching and that was to remove the back. 
so I'm going to do that now as long as you do it before the satin stitch you won't see it you just need to get really really close to the stitching though if you're if you've gone this far Okay, that's fine. I'm now going to pop it into my machine and I'm going to do round number five. I'm going to do round six, which we'll do down the bottom area here. So that's the first panel that's been finished. I'm just going to free it from the stabiliser now. You want to make sure that all around the raw edges that it's cut nice and closely to the stitching because along here and here is where you're going to be doing your joining on the next piece. I'm not too bothered about the edge, I'm not cutting too close there because the wash away stabiliser will be dissolved at the end of it so it's only along the raw edges that uh, I'm really bothered about. Okay, I'm just going to trim up here, make sure they're all nice and close. I can use my other scissors, it'd be a lot easier. <laughs> okay, now it's time to hoop our stabiliser again for the second piece. So I've got my wash away again that into my hoop and a piece of cutaway on top I'm going to pop that into my machine and I've loaded the second file and I'm just about to stitch round one of that second file. Okay with the outline done I'm going to turn this over. You'll note that this time instead of having four uh, curves at the top here we've got five. Now the fifth one is going to be the centre of the four because this one here will attach to there. So in order to be able to hang this I need to put a little bit of ribbon on it. So I'm putting the ribbon in the middle of the, the top curve here and I'm going to stick that down with some tape. <laughs> it's always fiddly on camera. So now when it's stitched, it will stitch that into, and uh, these ends will be hidden. Now you want to make sure that you've got it more or less central. I think that's okay. So the next bit is to add another piece of fabric. For the backing so I'll cover that there and as before I'm going to put some tape on the corners just to hold it in place and 
turn it back over put some felt on make sure that I cover all the outline and another piece of fabric on top and the stitch sequence is very similar to the last one with the exception of this time we will be adding the first piece that we've made to this one so I'm now going to pop that back in my machine and stitch round two now I'm going to do round number three which is the quilting and now I'm going to trim up the excess fabric Well, and you can hear in the background probably is my computer it's working overtime to try and keep cool it's so hot here I'm just trim as much of this yellow back as I possibly can okay now to trim the back up and I need to be a little bit careful because I've got my ribbon there okay I'm just going to neaten this up before I pop it back in my machine to do the zigzag stitching which is round number four so now I'm going to pop it back into my machine and stitch round number four now it's going to stop where I have to join the other piece to it so now we come to join this piece to this one now the idea is that you get this line here, this line of stitching, right on top of this one here. And then, with any luck, if you've got it right, you'll have an invisible seam. Now then, this usually requires a couple of pins rather than tape, but I'm just going to use tape to hold it while I pin it because otherwise it moves around and it's not as easy to get an accurate pinning now my pins I'm going to put as far away from the stitch line as possible because I don't want them to get caught in my machine and damage them so I put them right over here by the by the edge of the hoop like so now with a little bit of luck I can get away with one pin and a bit of tape now for this bit you want to make your machine go as slow as possible so as there's no slow setting on mine I have to stop and start it but I'll just supervise it see how it goes it, it might be okay okay so I'm now going to pop that back into my machine and stitch round number five that's going to do the joining stitch down there you want you want to check I'll just take this out and show you it'll be easier okay so that's the zigzag line that's just done you want to check that there's no fabric poking through here if there is it's because you haven't aligned it properly 
you can just snip through these zigzag stitches and redo it, reposition it and do it again. So I'm now going to pop this back in my machine and do the next round of stitching which is round number six. And now I'm going to do colour seven. Next I'm going to remove the tape and the pins, or pin should I say. <laughs> And I'm going to cut it free from the hoop. Now, where this um, is joined, you need to take care along here that you don't catch it. So I tend to cut there first, and I put my scissors in, hold my fingers at the back, and hold it out the way, and then cut along. All this here, the, the stabiliser that you can see here, will disappear once we wet it afterwards. Be careful of the little loop. Just going to pull that through there for a minute. And again, along here, make sure that you trim nice and close and trim it up afterwards because that's going to be the join line onto the third piece. Okay, that's not too bad actually. There's a few areas here that I could do with a little bit more shaved off. Oh, it sounds like my voice is about to go. I do apologise. Okay, so that's that piece completed. Now I'm going to hoop some more stabiliser and I'm going to do file number three, which is the bottom piece that this will join on to. Exactly the same as the last two pieces. And a piece of cutaway on top. Okay, I'm now going to pop that in my machine to do the outline stitching. I think I'm about to play chicken with the little bit of thread remaining on the spool there. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can guess by now what's coming. Let me turn this over. 
and I'm going to place a piece of fabric on the back and tape it down. Once you've got the hang of these in the hoop projects, you can do some pretty amazing stuff. Okay, turn that over now. Place the felt over the outline. Fabric on top. And I'm going to pop that back in my machine and stitch down round number two. And hopefully my bobbin thread, uh, my spool thread, sorry, won't run out until the end. And now the quilting stitch. And time to trim away again. Okay, I'm now going to pop that back in my machine and do round four, which is a zigzag stitch. Now it's time to join our previous two pieces to this one. And exactly the same way as I did for this, I'm going to do for this one. So I'm going to get a bit of tape and line up the stitch lines and then I'm going to pin it once again well out of the way of the stitching Oops. I'm just going to check this now. I think that looks okay. Right, now I'm going to pop it back in my machine and do round number five, which is the joining stitch. Okay, I guess we're going to find out who's going to win me or the machine with the thread this time. I think we can call that close draw actually. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do round number six. Okay, so now I can remove this from the hoop, so I'll start off with the pins. Now I'm going to turn it over and trim up all the, the threadies. cut it from the hoop 
I'm going to push this piece away with my fingers just so that I don't catch it with my scissors. Okay. So if we wanted just an ordinary placemat, we wouldn't have put this on, of course, and we would stop there. But we're not going to do that. I'm now going to stitch out another um, a file three, but without joining anything to it this time. So I go straight through the steps one to six without stopping. Exactly the same way as before. Hoop it, pop it in, do the outline, pop it back, uh, do the quilting, trim off the excess and then do the satin stitch. Okay, so I'm going to get on and hoop it up. Add my cutaway. Pop it in my machine and stitch it down. As before, turn her over, add the backing fabric, hold it in place with a piece of tape. Turn it back again, cover the lines with the felt and fabric. I'm going to pop it back into my machine and stitch round number two. And now the quilting round. trim up the excess fabric. Okay now for the back. I'm now going to pop it back in my machine and stitch right to round number sti six until it's finished. Now round number five. Lastly, number six. So now it's time to free this one from the hoop as well. Okay, so there's our two pieces. I'm sure you'll agree they look absolutely fantastic as a placemat and a coaster. But we're going to take it one step further and we're going to make a little catch-all out of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is align the bottom edge here, like so. And I'm just going to pin it for a minute now. There's going to be a bit of jiggling around with the pins, but I just want that held in place for a minute. Now, where these are, I want to bring them in so that one sits just in front of the other. And I'm going to pin that. And the same the other side.
then I'm going to adjust the bottom a little bit just so that it sits just upwards from the bottom one and we need it like that so that we can shape this around to form a cup I suppose so now I'm going to bring this edge in to line up with this one here and I'm going to pin that and the same the other side you want it to sit one directly on top of the other Oops. okay I want to fiddle around with that before I actually stitch it down so now you can see how that sits just just inside that edge the bottom more or less lines up and then it goes around to here and then across here to line up with I suppose the first um, row of satin stitching when you stitch it down you're actually going to stitch it not on the actual um, uh, embroidery line but just inside and use the same thread that you've already used on this and then it will become virtually invisible and you're just going to go around all the way around in fact you don't even need to do that edge you can go straight up that line there and not worry about this because it's negligible okay I'm now going to stitch that down on my sewing machine okay so I'm now going to stitch it down taking it really really slowly so that I can be accurate on the stitch line up because I want it right at the edge of the embroidery Okay, and that's it, stitched. Okay, so now the moment of truth, take the pins out. Pull a little pocket out and let's trim up the threadies. there it is one lovely little catch-all thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this if you did please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to be notified of all new videos coming out shortly thanks for joining me